because many of us sit all day, like the early Shaolin monks. Our bodies have lost their natural grace, power, and suppleness. Even worse, we tighten the body unnaturally with tension and stress of daily living. As an actor, I know about stress. I know I must remove this stress in order to free my mind to create, whether it be in acting, writing, gung fu, or any of my many endeavors. None of us can completely avoid this stress, but we can prevent it from harming our physical, mental, and spiritual well-being. We can do this by bringing ourselves closer to nature. The ancient Chinese based Kung Fu on the movements of animals and the elements. They saw in nature the strength of the bear, the grace of the cat, the speed of the snake. They observed how effortlessly the animals moved. And by imitating them, they improved their strength balance and coordination. They began to gain new insights into the essence of each animal's nature. They used this knowledge to increase their own mental powers. They experienced a clarity of thought and conquered stress and tension at will. Their minds and bodies began to work in unison, unleashing their full human potential. Combining their new discoveries of the body and mind, the monks developed a philosophy of life, one in accordance with the natural laws of the universe. Aggressiveness was replaced by confidence. Manipulation by receptiveness and resistance by acceptance. Mind, body, and spirit became one. And together they became one with nature. Kung Fu was so highly valued in the Orient that for centuries, the Sifus, the great masters of the art, refused to reveal the secrets of Kung Fu. Only recently have the most progressive Sifus brought Kung Fu to the West, realizing that its true destiny was to spread its wisdom to all the world. in reverse. It helps to increase the range of motion in your neck and release tension. Now, feet together. Hands on lower back. Rotate your hips. Clockwise. Keep your head still. Relax your body. Try to make the rotations as large as possible. Relax your back. Reverse. This increases the range of motion in your hips and trims your midsection. Knees bent deep and together. Rotate clockwise. Clockwise. This strengthens your knees, thighs, and ankles. Rotation of the knee joints is good for the ligaments and tendons. Now reverse. There is no need to bend your knees deeply. A slight bending is perfectly adequate. Straighten up and take a deep breath. Rotate your right arm backwards in big circles. Like this. Extend. Left arm forward, elbow locked. Turn the wrist out. In. Center. Turn the hand over. Form a crane's beak. Snap the wrist back and bend the elbow. Strike out. Keep the fingers straight. Turn wrist out 
in, center, turn hand over, form a crane's beak. Snap the wrist back and bend the elbow. Strike out. This is called the horse stance. Stand with your feet wide spread and hands on your hips. Knees out, toes forward. Keep your back straight and sit into the stance. Push your buttocks forward. From the horse stance, single punches. Fists at your side, knuckles down. Rotate your fists as you punch and keep your elbows in. One does not have to master some esoteric art to know the simple truth of Kung Fu. That the mind and the body work best when they work as one. Kung Fu is not a technique to be called upon only in an emergency, but a way to improve every aspect of your life. As with any art, the more it's practiced, the better the student becomes. But practice when your body wants to. Approach your relationship to Kung Fu as you would a courtship, getting to know it until you steadily build a genuine love for the art. 